Hey YouTube, I'm Delana and this is The Tech Flex. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. If you've watched my videos before, welcome back sis. So today we're going to talk about how to break into tech. So as you know or may not know, I was featured on The Shaded Room as a black woman in tech and I gained a lot of new subscribers on YouTube and new followers on my Insta blog at The Tech Flex on Instagram. And I just want to say thank you for all the positive comments. I got so much positive feedback from that feature. And I'm just really excited and grateful for, you know, what's to come on this channel. And I hope that I can continue providing good content and, you know, just continue to help more people break into the tech industry. And with that being said, let's run up the back, speak of us. It's time to run it up. We're done staying, we're done playing. And we're coming for everything that is owed to us. And that's just period. So the question that I got the most over the last week or so is, how can I get started in tech? And that is really why I wanted to make this video first because so many people ask this question and it's a very broad question. So I kind of wanted to just explain a little bit to everyone how you can get started regardless of what your niche is. So with that being said, let's get into it. Y'all already know I'm back again with another OOTD. Do y'all like when I do these? Let me know in the comments. I'm going absolutely nowhere, but that ain't none of y'all's business. Don't y'all hate when people comment on your pictures and be like, but where are you going? Girl, I'm going to take pictures. Mind your business. But anyway, girl, let's get back to the video. First, you're going to want to research different tech careers. Within the tech industry, there are both technical paths as well as non-technical career paths that you can choose from. Some of the career paths in the technical industry would include cybersecurity, web development, IT support, software engineering, data science, data analytics, and many more. And even within those career paths, there are a lot of roles available. So like, for example, cybersecurity is also another large umbrella. Within cybersecurity, you can be an ethical hacker or a cybersecurity analyst or a network engineer. So you wanna kinda of get an idea of at least that niche, like whether it's cybersecurity or software engineering, just to get started. And then maybe later on, you can kind of determine after researching and things like that, what specific roles you're interested in to get started. Some of the non-technical roles include tech sales, project management, product management, UI, UX, and even some of those roles can kind of be a little bit technical, like UI can be technical to some people, seeing that you have to use HTML and CSS. Product management can easily become technical if you're a technical product manager, which if you're in the tech industry, you probably are. But overall, there's a lot of flexibility as far as how technical you want your non-technical job to be, or if you want it to be extremely non-technical, so it really just depends on what you're interested in. After you finish watching this video, be sure to check out my video on non-technical roles in the tech industry, just so you can get a few examples to get you started. Um, and I'll also be making a part two of that soon as well. So it's really important for you to figure out what career path you wanna go down first before doing anything else. So a lot of the things that I'm gonna talk about, like networking, um, skills and certifications and things like that, you won't even know what to do unless you at least figure out what career paths you're interested in first. So like I said, I got a lot of comments and messages saying, how can I get started in tech? And it's like, it's really hard to answer that question if you don't know what part of the industry you wanna be a part of. There's so many different parts. And that's the beauty of it is that you can find something that you're interested in. Just figure out what you're interested in, what you wouldn't mind doing and start from there. So one thing that really helped me pick my specific career path is attending meetups. So I did talk about this in my how to become a software engineer video. I pretty much attended these events so that I could talk to software engineers and data scientists and just kind of like hear why they chose their specific career path. And honestly, that helped me a lot because I had more opinions that I could use to help me weigh my options and eventually I made a decision to become a software engineer. Along with research, you definitely want to watch a lot of YouTube and look up a lot of articles. I YouTube myself to death when I was trying to make my decision and when I was trying to go through this process. Like, I watch YouTube so much. You can look up videos like a day in the life as a cybersecurity analyst or a day in the life as a software engineer or a work vlog as a tech sales representative or something like that. 
Um, there's so many different videos out there. I would look up videos on how I became a software engineer, how I got into UX, like whatever videos you can find for the specific career path that you're interested in, watch them because that's also a good way to help you learn a lot about your specific niche and just educate yourself. So next is skills and certifications. Each career path has its own set of skills and certifications that can make you marketable for that specific career path. Um, there are so many different ways to obtain skills and there are so many different ways to receive certifications, especially at like a low cost. So you definitely want to consider all your options to figure out what can make you marketable for that career path. It's not always necessary to get certifications, but sometimes it is helpful. Especially if you're someone who doesn't have a degree or doesn't have any experience, things like certifications can definitely help boost your resume. But like I said, they're not always necessary. For example, an aspiring software engineer might not need any certifications, but it's probably more useful for you to focus on your skill set and master things like data structures so that you can better prepare for interviews. However, for other fields such as cybersecurity or cloud computing, certifications might make it easier for you to break into the field. Definitely check out companies such as Google, Amazon, and Oracle because they do have a lot of their own certifications that will look really good on your resume. Like how cool would it be to have a certification that's straight from Google. Another platform that I really like is edX because I think edX is actually created by MIT and Harvard. And basically their purpose is to allow, you know, underrepresented, underrepresented and low economic students receive certifications in education without paying a high price. So there's a lot of courses and certifications out there on that website that you can take advantage of from top institutions such as Harvard, MIT, Georgia Tech. They even have a few from different companies like IBM. And it's just a really cool website to get a few you know, credentials under your belt. I have actually taken a few courses from edX and interviewers always think that it's so cool when they see Harvard on my resume like, I'm telling y'all, interviewers eat that stuff up. Like, they love seeing me having Harvard X on my resume. They always ask about it, and I always explain what edX is and how it started and why I chose to take advantage of those courses and how I wanted to teach myself. It's like, it's just the perfect opportunity to gas yourself up and sound like you're someone who is capable of teaching yourself things and that you can learn things on the fly. It's just, it's just a win-win. So definitely look into things like that. And if you were anything like me, I didn't have nothing else to talk about but my certifications and my projects that I made in my classes because I didn't have any experience. So it was just good that I could have some things on my resume for me to brag about. So I was basically like, I don't have experience, but I have this cool project from Udemy. I have this certification from Harvard X. Girl, you have to literally fake it till you make it because what else are you supposed to do? What else are you gonna do? As for learning skills, make sure that you utilize prep. As, as for learning skills, make sure that you use platforms such as YouTube, Coursera, LinkedIn Learning, Udemy. There's so many different platforms out there that are very affordable. Like I said in one of my videos, I bought two courses that had like 30 hours each of content for less than $30 for both on Udemy. So there's a lot of affordable out there. Hey guys, I also forgot to mention about boot camps. If you are looking to go into a more technical field like software engineering or cybersecurity or data analytics or even UI UX, there are a lot of great boot camps out there that will teach you everything that you need to know as well as help you prepare for job searching. But if you are starting in tech completely from scratch and you don't really know a lot and you know that you don't want to teach yourself, a bootcamp is another great way to learn the skills that you need to break into the industry. And lastly, of course, you have the option to pursue a two year or a four year degree as well. Definitely make sure that you research things like the cost, the time frame, and keep all of those things into consideration. So the next step is definitely to network. So as I said earlier, it's really important for you to network with people who are both in your career and people who are aspiring to break into your career path as well. So this will kind of help you learn more about your niche through both formal and informal conversations. 
For me, the people that I network with helped me a lot through my interviewing process. Um, it was really cool to hear about their interviewing process. And every time we would have interviews, we would just kind of bounce ideas back and forth about how we would have solved this problem differently or answered this question differently. And it was just really nice to have a small village. We also helped each other prepare for interviews. We gave each other mock interviews. So all of that was just really helpful throughout my journey. I met a lot of people through Meetup, so I really didn't have to do this. But another thing that you can do that I did while I was in college is reach out to people on LinkedIn. You can connect with people who are in your aspiring career path and just kind of ask them questions about how they got into the field, what they like about it, what they don't like about it, and any advice that they have for someone who is trying to break into that field. The next step is to do projects. Depending on your field, this step might be optional. Like if you're in tech sales, you probably don't need to be doing any projects to break into the industry. But if you are someone like a front end software engineer or like aspiring front end software engineer, then you probably want to do some type of web app project so that you can talk about those things in your interview. This part can actually come very easily because like I said, there are a ton of courses out there that are either free or very inexpensive. And those courses will walk you through projects if you find the right one. And I used a course on Udemy where it was like 30 hours of content. The course was like $12 and I built like four or five projects just with that course alone. And those are the projects that I put on my resume and talked about during my interview process. So next you need to market yourself. And by market yourself, I mean fix up your LinkedIn and fix up your resume. I understand that a lot of people do struggle with resume writing. I honestly don't like writing resumes at all. But with a lot of practice and a lot of Googling, I've gotten better at it over the years. If you really struggle with writing resumes, you can definitely hire a resume writer or a cover letter writer. One pro tip that I would share with y'all is definitely make your resume on Google Docs. That way you can easily share the link with people and make the settings so that they can comment only so that people can give you feedback on your resume. So I sent the link to my resume to a bunch of my friends to just review, check for grammatical errors or things that just don't make sense. And I got a lot of good feedback on my resume so that I was able to make changes. It's a lot harder to share documents with Microsoft Word and it's just not too much. So just try to make your resume in a Google Doc if you can. Pro tip number two is to use Etsy for resume templates. They have templates that are like $4, $2, no more than like $10 and they do have Google Doc formats as well. And we all know that everything on Etsy is so cute. So there's a lot of really nice clean formats. And whenever I'm helping someone write their resume, I always point them to Etsy first to get a nice template. Unless you are a graphic designer or someone who's just really good at designing things, zone. Don't try to design your own template. It's going to look a mess. Don't, 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 don't do it. Zone, zone, do it. On average, recruiters only look at resumes for six seconds, so you want the layout to be perfect and very legible. Outside of resumes, your LinkedIn is so, so, so important. If you don't have a LinkedIn, please create one. If you have all the buzzwords for your industry or the career path that you're trying to go down, you'll get a lot of recruiters in your messages. That's just a way that recruiters find people is through LinkedIn, and people will really slide in your LinkedIn DMs asking you to interview. If you play your cards right, it's a feeling thing correctly. I'm telling y'all, when I was job searching, like 60% of the interviews that I got were literally from people just messaging me on LinkedIn. I'm not anyone special. I did not have any experience at the time. I simply just had the buzzwords on my LinkedIn and that attracted a lot of recruiters to my messages asking me to interview. Definitely set your profile to open to work so that recruiters can know that you're available for new opportunities. Once you write your resume, perfecting your LinkedIn will be a piece of cake because you're literally just taking those same bullet points and adding them to your profile. So you're using your experience and adding that to your LinkedIn. You're gonna take the skills that you listed on your resume and add those to your LinkedIn. If you already have a cover letter, you can easily take a few sentences out of your cover letter and just rephrase them so that you can have a LinkedIn summary. And again, like I always say, research. Research what should be on your LinkedIn, what should be on your resume for your desired career path. So that's really important. Look at some articles, look at some YouTube videos. You have to be comfortable with research, especially if you want to go into the tech industry. So that's all the tips that I have for you all today. I hope that these tips can help you get started on your new journey. Please keep me updated in the comments as to how things are going. I'd love to know what phase you are in in this process. 
If you have finally determined your career path, let me know in the comments as well. I really want y'all to keep me updated. I think the most important thing to gather from this video is the power of researching. As someone who is in the tech industry, you are going to be researching a lot, especially if you're in a technical role. And it's just better to just exercise that skill set now, especially if you're not familiar with tech. The only way to get familiar with it is by researching, stepping outside of your shell, and just constantly trying to learn something new. Every day you should learn something new. The tech industry is a very rewarding industry to be a part of, and I really hope that this video helps everyone get started. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I'll do my best to address anyone's concerns. If you found the information in this video useful, please like, comment, and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.